بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی ٹاپک آف دس لیکچر از رائن این سفیلون ان مائی سیکنڈ لیکچر پرابلی فسٹ لیکچر وین وی کلاسیفائی دی نروس سسٹم وی ڈیوائڈیڈ دی برین ان ٹو فور برین مڈ برین اینڈ ہائنڈ برین four brain are prosencephalon mid brain are mesencephalon and hind brain are rhinencephalon or rhombencephalon hind brain are رومبینسفلان میزنسفلان فور برین آر پروزنسفلان نو فور برین وی فردر کلاسیفائیڈ انٹو ٹیلنسفلان رائننسفلان and dinosaurus so telencephalon or cerebrum we finished with the external features of cerebrum the next part of the forebrain is the rhinencephalon so today we will talk about the rhinencephalon Ryan and Sussman. That uh, part of the forebrain which is meant for sense of smell. and sense of smell is also known as olfaction so the rhinencephalon comprise of various parts some of these parts of the brain are visible on the external surface of the brain visible to the naked eye but some of the parts we can't see unless and until we cut a section of the brain so what are the different components of rhinencephalon which is bent for sense of olfaction or smell these are number 1 olfactory bulb next to olfactory bulb is olfactory tract pre piriform area next to pre piriform area is piriform area hippocampal formation hippocampal formation next to hippocampal formation is the paraterminal gyrus
next to paraterminal garage is the fornex and another part is the habinular nucleus Now these are different parts of the rhinencephalon olfactory bulb followed by olfactory tract then pre piriform area next to that piriform area still next to that is hippocampal formation then paraterminal gyrus fornix habinular nucleus now the piriform area further comprise of different components what are the different parts which are collectively known as the piriform area that is anterior perforated substance anterior perforated anterior perforated substance then anterior part of para hippocampal gyrus yes. then uncus and next part is the amygdaloid body now these are different parts of the piriform area so what are the different parts of the brain which are included in the rhinencephalon olfactory bulb olfactory tract pre piriform area why pre piriform area because it is in front of the piriform area so pre piriform area then piriform area which further comprise of anterior perforated substance anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus then uncus then amygdaloid body these are parts of the piriform area next to piriform area is hippocampal formation and then there is para terminal gyrus then fornix then habinular nucleus now to show different parts of the rhinencephalon i have to draw the basal surface of the cerebrum again so this is right cerebral hemisphere left cerebral hemisphere and you know the midline structures right and left optic nerves optic chiasma followed by right and left optic tracts
then behind the optic chiasma this is tuber cinerium still behind tuber cinerium right and left mammary bodies then posterior perforated substance and then section to the midbrain you know this is frontal pole this is temporal pole and this is occipital pole now first of all is the olfactory bulb olfactory bulb now you can see here on the orbital part of the inferior surface just below the olfactory sulcus is the right and left olfactory bulbs olfactory bulb is followed by olfactory tract olfactory bulb then olfactory bulb is continued backwards in the form of a tract in the form of a tract known as the olfactory tract then the terminal part of the olfactory tract expands known as the olfactory trigon then olfactory trigon divide into three lateral stia medial stia intermediate stia these are stii the olfactory bulb it receive olfactory nerves which carry the sense of olfaction from the olfactory mucosa of the nose the olfactory nerve filaments passes through the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone of the skull into the cranial cavity and then enter into the olfactory bulb the detail of the olfactory nerve the first cranial nerve we will discuss later on then from the neurons of olfactory bulb axons arises which are crowded together to form a tract bundle of nerve fibers is known as tract so from the cell bodies of the neurons of olfactory bulb axons arises and these several axons are crowded together to form a tract known as the olfactory tract terminal part of the olfactory tract slightly enlarges which is known as olfactory trigon and the olfactory trigon divide into three branches are mi lateral stria medial stria intermediate stria so this was the olfactory bulb olfactory tract and then next one is pre piriform area you know here is the gyrus rectus if you remember so just uh, inner to the olfactory stria 
here this there is a small part of this gyrus on each side just inner to the stria of the olfactory tract this area is known as the pre piriform area pre piriform area so i uh, this is gyrus rectus medial to the olfactory tract on the orbital part of the inferior surface so small part of this uh, gyrus rectus just medial to the stria this area is labeled as pre piriform area now next to pre piriform area is the piriform area piriform area which is further comprising of anterior perforated substance anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus uncus amygdaloid body now i will explain these by another diagram the lateral view of this medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so this is the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere medial surface of one cerebral hemisphere and i told you the midline structure is the corpus callosum and in the previous lecture we discussed the corpus callosum in detail comprising of rostrum genu trunk and splenium and you know that from the under surface of the corpus callosum septum pellucidum arises and at the lower free border of the septum pellucidum is the fornix septum pellucidum and this is fornix then you know the other parts entirely is anterior commissure below that is the lamina terminalis and other structures this is a lamina terminalis and other structure i will not draw that is not required at this stage and then i told you there is a sulcus called cingulate sulcus then supraspinal supraspinal sulcus Then parieto occipital sulcus, 
and Calcara and Sankar. Then the collateral sulcus. Next to it is the rhinal sulcus, a hook shaped sulcus, rhinal sulcus. And here you know is the central sulcus surrounded by para central labule and you know the precuneus cuneus lingual gyrus this is cingulate gyrus and medial frontal gyrus now this is cingulate gyrus between the callosal sulcus surrounding the carpus callosum, the cingulate sulcus, then supraspinal sulcus. This red one, this red strip line is cingulate gyrus. Then behind this cingulate gyrus, here there is a small gyrus known as the isthmus. Now, isthmus is continued, then elongated gyrus, known as the parahippocampal gyrus. Parahippocampal gyrus. Extending from isthmus forwards. Then it is continued as the uncus. This uh, hook shaped gyrus. Surrounded by a rhinal sulcus. This is uncus. Surrounded by a rhinal sulcus. Now we are talking about the uh, piriform area comprising of anterior perforated substance. What is the anterior perforated substance? Here just distal to the olfactory tract, the brain substance 
through perforations for the passage of central branches of anterior central branches of anterior and middle cerebral arteries so the cortex of this region is part of the olfactory system that is the rhinencephalon so we talk about the olfactory bulb olfactory tract olfactory stria then the pre piriform area that is small medial part of the carus rectus just inner to the stria then the piriform area there are several structures as i told you collectively they are included as the piriform area now what are these number 1 is the anterior perforated substance anterior perforated substance then anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus can you see from isthmus up to the uncus this is para hippocampal gyrus now which part of the para hippocampal gyrus belong to rhinencephalon anterior part Now this is anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus. From here, from isthmus up to the this uh, uncus, this hole is this gyrus is known as para hippocampal gyrus. Now, which part of the para hippocampal gyrus is included in the rhinencephalon? that is the anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus and what is the next part of the rhinencephalon that is the piriform area that is this hook shaped gyrus which is known as the uncus so anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus and uncus belong to the piriform area now do not to confuse with these terminologies this is para hippocampal gyrus and this is hippocampal formation this is something else the para hippocampal gyrus this gyrus is called para hippocampal gyrus and this is hippocampal formation that we will discuss later on so there is difference between these two so the the rhinencephalon comprises of anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus and it is continued as the uncus so what are the part of piriform area we talk about anterior perforated substance we discuss the anterior part of the para hippocampal gyrus then we discuss the uncus all are shown in this diagram next part of the piriform area is the amygdaloid body now what is amygdaloid body now you know there is thalamus in oval shaped mass of granite now what is this this is thalamus now this is thalamus in oval shaped mass of granite now close to it there is a, a nucleus a c shaped or comma shaped nucleus which is 
near the thalamus. This uh, nucleus is C-shaped or comma-shaped. and is known as the caudate nucleus. Now this nucleus comprises of different parts. For example, this is the head of the caudate nucleus. This is body of the caudate nucleus. And this is tail of the cardiac nucleus. There is a comma shaped or C shaped nucleus known as the cardiac nucleus. It comprises of different parts. This is head of the cardiac nucleus. This is body of the cardiac nucleus. And this is tail of the cardiac nucleus. So head and part of the body is in close relation with the thalamus and then it moves a little away from the thalamus. Now at the tail end of the caudate nucleus there is a rounded body in this rounded body which is close to the tail of caudate nucleus This is known as the amygdaloid body. At the tail end of the cardiac nucleus, there is a body known as the amygdaloid body. It is outside, it comprises of white matter and inside is gray matter. Just like uh, if you give a cut to a boiled egg. Outside is the white and inside is the albumin. So it is like this. Now from this uh, amygdalite body, number of nerve fibers arise, which run along the tail and then leave the tail and reaches the hypothalamus. These uh, nerve fibers, which starts from the amygdaloid body, run along part of the tail of the cardiate nucleus, then leave the tail of cardiate nucleus to have connection with the hypothalamus. These are called stria terminalis. Stria terminalis. and have connection with the hypothalamus and other structures we'll discuss later on. So, our main structure is the amygdaloid body. Because it was in relation to the caudate nucleus and connection with the hypothalamus, etc. So, I drawn the whole picture of these parts of the brain. So, this was amygdaloid body. Now, all these interior perforated substance here it is shown then anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus this one then its continuation in the form of a hook shaped gyrus known as the uncus next part of the piriform area is the amygdaloid body which is at the tail of the cardiac nucleus so these were different parts of the piriform area. Next to piriform area, there is other part of the brain known as the hippocampal formation that we will discuss later on uh, in the internal features of the brain and spinal cord. Then there is gyrus, which is just anterior and parallel to the lamina terminalis, known as the paraterminal gyrus. Now, can you see this is lamina terminalis? And in front of it, a small gyrus, which I have shown. 
This is called paratunnel gyrus. Paraterminal gyrus. This uh, also is believed to be part of the rhinal sebula. Para. This is lamina terminalis, and anterior to it is the paraterminal gyrus. Then you are familiar with the fornix. Already we talked many times and drawn this structure attached to the lower free border of the septum pellucidum fornix. It also below and related to the rhinal cephalon. Then a binular nucleus. I told you in the posterior wall, the third ventricle, above is the habinular commissure, then pineal stack, a pineal body, and below is the posterior commissure. So habinular commissure connect the right and left habinular nuclei. One uh, right habinular nucleus is below the right thalamus, the other habinular nucleus is below the left thalamus, and these are interconnected with either by the habinular commissure, the commissural fibers, which run in the upper part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle above the epipinal recess and this I already explained in the previous diagram. So the nuclei which are interconnected by habinular commission called habinular uh, nuclei which are also part of the rhinocephalon. So these were different parts of the brain which belong to the sense of smell or infection. I will just summarize. The different parts of the brain which belong to rhinencephalon are olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, olfactory stria, bulb, tract and stria. Then just inner to the olfactory stria and olfactory trigone, this small part of the gyrus rectus has a special name known as the pre-periform area. Why it's called pre piriform Because it is in front of the piriform area. So it's pre piriform area. Next is the piriform area. It do not comprise of a single structure. Many structures are included in the piriform area. For example, anterior perforated substance. Here there is a layer of gray matter having several perforations. So this layer of gray matter in which there are these perforations for the entrance of central branches of the the anterior and the middle cerebral artery uh, is part of the rhinencephalon. The cortex of the, uh, the anterior perforated substance is part of the piriform area. Then anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus. Parahippocampal gyrus. Now this is Parahippocampal gyrus, you are familiar with it. Not the whole parahippocampal gyrus, only the anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus is part of the, the piriform area of rhinocephalon. Then the anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus is continued as hook shaped gyrus, which is known as the uncus. So, uncus is also part of the piriform area. Next, there is a body known as the amygdalar body located close to the tail of cardiac nucleus. From it, a bundle of nerve fibers run known as the stria terminalis, which then leave the cardiac surface of the cardiac nucleus and have connection with the hypothalamus and other parts. So all these are collectively known as the piriform area. Next to piriform area is hippocampal formation. Do not confuse the parahippocampal gyrus with the hippocampal formation that we will discuss later on in detail in the internal features because there are many components of this. Now next to it, this is lamina terminalis. There is a vertical gyrus just anterior to the lamina terminalis. This is called paraterminal gyrus. It is also part of the rhinencephalon. Then at the lower border of the septum pellucidum, uh, this uh, bundle of fibers running anteroposterly is known as the fornix. So fornix is also part of the rhinocephalon. Then habinular nucleus. One nucleus is on the right side below the right thalamus. Another nucleus is on the left side 
below the left thalamus, and these two nuclei are interconnected by habilunar commissure. The habilunar commissure traverses the upper part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle. So habilunar nuclei, one right and left, also belong to the rhinencephalon. So this was about the different parts of the brain which are included in rhinencephalon bent for sense of smell. Thank you very much.